University in our film program, actually, and have been working with our law school over the last six years to expand people's access to fair use. Fair use is, is part of copyright law, and it says that you have the right to use other people's copyrighted material without licensing it, without paying for it, or even asking them permission under some circumstances. The law itself is rather vague, so then the question is, how do you interpret that law? The first one is uh, best practices and fair use for documentary filmmakers, and this is something that moved doc filmmakers from not being able to be really sure without that they might not get sued. I mean, how do they stay safe? Uh, th for moving from that sense of like kind of scared to a great sense of comfort about there are these are the zones in which I can work it's intuitive the same thing happened with with online video where once we established what is legal fair use in online video working with people who make online video it became an industry standard and and Google in fact paid us to make films to put up on YouTube to explain how to use fair use correctly you cannot, you cannot enter discourse about our culture without quoting from it. Fair use is rooted in the First Amendment. So if you're telling a story and you need or want or it's reasonable to use little pieces of other people's stuff to tell that story, that's protected as a First Amendment right. Under, and we call it in copyright law fair use, but that's where it comes from. Pictures in order to, for instance, on Amazon tell people like this is what it looks like, um, or for for any other commercial or non-commercial purpose, that that has been found to be completely legal because you're not taking that person's uh, market away from them. Fine. So you have to separate out their business hysteria from your actual legal situation. Bloggers have a perfect right to quote in context and to say, well. Washington Post said this. Here's the, how the Times covered it. Um, and here's a link to the whole article if you want to look at that. And they have a perfect right as well to quote pictures, images, and to link to video on, an, on a commercial site that is producing that stuff. Once again, within context, what is it that they're doing that's different from the original site? And then I think bloggers are doing just fine. And they're employing their fair use rights just like... Um, scholars do every day when they quote several um, several previous scholars and write in their articles that these previous scholars didn't know what they were talking about when they said X, Y, and Z, and I'm right. And keep in mind the First Amendment roots. There's no First Amendment right to steal somebody's stuff and make money off it. Like, I just want to have a newspaper and I will use articles from everybody else's newspaper. That's not fair that's not fair use remember the first amendment sources if you're saying look at the way the washington post covered this story they really did a bad job because they didn't mention a b and c and you point that out and then you show how uh, the new york times did mention abc the wall of the wall street journal did mention abc that's commentary and that's making something totally new there you're not just uh, creating a competitive news source, you're actually showing how different